My father once told me, when I was in army near Murmansk in Russia, I longed and longed again and again to see that magical moment. I longed for my hours being night guard when I could watch up in the sky to see the reverse of light. Northern Lights. My 90 years old grandma told me, I saw them only once in my life in Latvia. On that late evening, the northern sky was in strange reddish color. The first time I saw the northern lights was in Latvia too. But that was just a glimpse of them. That was the very end of that process, and I saw just tiny few very pale white pieces of that blanket. In three minutes they were away, like saying to me, goodbye, Eriks, we have to run now to Iceland, to Greenland, Canada, America, to shine there. I was astonished of that beauty, and I didn't want to give up. I said, <laughs> I will chase for you. And I went to Tromsø, to Tromsø, Norway, the most easiest place to reach Northern Lights from Latvia. In Tromsø, I met professional photographer Kjetil Skogli, who had been the chaser of Aurora for many, many years. And I told him, Kjetil, would you give me your professional camera so on the night I could go out and try to picture them, to get more, to learn more about the lights? And he did. The forecast was very weak, just two out of nine. With my rental car, I left Tromsø, left civilization, and stopped in complete white, cold, frosty field of snow, and waited. And at seven o'clock at night, the show started. It was magical, so powerful. I was surprised, and it turned out that the show continued till the sun came in the morning. Take a look at a few pictures, what I saw. And that continued for eight hours. Well, it continued for me for eight hours, because I was so tired. <laughs> Just taking a picture there and there. And you know, it's not so easy to take the picture, because, because of that special light, the exposure has to be open 10 seconds, 20 seconds, when it's very bright, four seconds. So, and, and I was with my tripod and camera, and just finding the place, and again and again. And after eight hours, <laughs> I felt I'm fed up of the light. <laughs> I saw the whole picture of the northern lights. I was inspired. I was laying in the snow, just me and the lights. No, there was something else. At one moment, there was a noise by animal. I thought, a bear? No, there is no bear. White bear? Mm -mm. Um, perhaps a deer, a fox, but that noise <coughs> was coming closer and closer to me. So I'm a composer. So I, I also was making some noise, and the animal disappeared, because I was afraid, actually being in that new place, alone in the night. I decided to do research. In Iceland, I met ethnologists. 
Sigurdur Egeson. He told me a lot of Icelandic stories about the Northern Lights. In Norway, I met the main scientist, Aurora scientist, Asger Brekke. Here, in University Library, he's showing me books about the Northern Lights. And mainly they are scientific. But I tell you the truth. The first chapter in those books usually is about Northern Lights in folklore. Here is scientist Truls Lynn Hansen, who showed me old measurement instruments, old tables, how scientists tried to measure the height of the Northern Lights, the distance, the magnetic field. And then, Ola Graf, music ethnologist, at Tromsø University Museum, played me a Sami Yoik for Aurora. Let's listen to that. Kulsa, kulsa, ratni kuli, pai li, pai li, pai da, roana kakti, no, 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 Northern Lights, blanket shivering, green coat. That's a translation of that yoik. And now I found the way. What shall I do with the Northern Lights that have been so inspirational to me? I will write multimedia symphony about that phenomena which is actually the largest, largest optical phenomena in the Earth's upper atmosphere. No rainbow, no sun dogs, no moon dogs, but the northern lights. No, I will not write just like five-minute choral song about that. I will not write seven-minute short piano piece about that. I want to use the largest musical forces which is symphony orchestra, mixed choir, electronics. I decided to find out those stories as much as possible. So, together with a professional filming team, I decided to go to expeditions. You know, the auroral belt in Northern Hemisphere goes above Scandinavia, a little bit of Baltics, Greenland, Iceland, northern Canada, Alaska, northern Siberia. And learning about these stories, you know, for Finns, northern lights is a big fox with big tail jumping from one mountain to another and with big tail throwing up the pieces of snow in the sky, and the, the northern lights. For other tribes, nations, northern lights is souls of dead people playing football with skulls up in the sky. Today we have opening of the World Cup in football, so I think <laughs> the football up there in the sky, football players will be very active followers to that event. For other nations, the Northern Lights is a way for dead souls to go up into heaven. Take a look at the wonderful artists I met. In Iceland, the couple sang old Rimur singing tradition song about the Northern Lights. In Greenland, an Inuit, Mikey, told his story about the Northern Lights. There was a moment when I came to a certain place and I found out that I have come there too late. 
the stories are gone. I was crying because that unique Aurora cultural heritage had disappeared from that land. But there is something else unique. There was a moment when I found myself in the middle of the forest, alone, in a dark night. The Aurora was running up there, and I heard sound. All around me, that sound came from the core of the trees, because in that special humidity and in frost, the core was breaking, creating that noise. I recorded that noise. I recorded wind during the northern lights. I recorded water. In Iceland, we recorded voices of birds, of some kind of seabirds. We couldn't see them. It was complete darkness at night. It was February, winter. I closed my eyes and I listened to those birdy love songs. And I found myself, no, 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 that's not winter Iceland. That's like hot spring in Africa. Thousands of birds. But that was surprising here, <laughs> beyond the polar circle in wintertime. And we recorded that, those sounds too. I was in fjords with my mic. And let's listen to the sound I recorded. What was it? The whale, the whale in winter, so far up in north. Fantastic. I decided to use those nature sounds in my multimedia symphony as well. And I would like to encourage you, when you sense a magical beauty, a magical moment, stay still and listen to it. And listen again. Listen to that silence. Be inspired. And follow that voice. How do the Northern Lights sound like? Scientists say that and that. They are not sure yet. Most of them say Northern Lights are not audible for human air. But I think the Northern Lights have been sounding in a unique way for ages through the unique stories by the people who have been living under the aurora belt through their stories, through their folk songs. And let me conclude my talk with video by Kjetil Skogli of Aurora and Latvian folk song, which says, whenever at night in the north, I saw the souls of the dead soldiers having their battle, I was afraid. What if they bring their war to my land too? Cik nāks dīnās precija mēli, redzēj kāvu skarojām. E, redzēj kāvu skarojām. Karo kāvi piedē besu, Bedi skarus mu zeme. Bedi skaru 
Mm-hmm.